I'm introducing you to one of Switzerland's most popular tourist destinations. This is beautiful Zermatt, the gate to heaven. Up in here you can witness some of the best panoramas of the Alps and of course get to see one of the world's most famous mountains, the iconic Matterhorn. Strap yourself in and let yourself be guided through this top winter holiday destination up in the Swiss Alps. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Geomographic. Right now I'm in Zermatt, which is one of my favorite towns here in Switzerland. In here you can get a lot of breathtaking views. But before I'm starting this video, I would like to acknowledge my sponsor, which is the Hotel Christiania, which has such an amazing spa. It's already my second time I'm here. The first time I came here in 2014, a long time before I started YouTubing. The hotel is really great. As I said, the spa is just fantastic. And the food in here is also very delicious. All right, and now let's get this episode started. There are a lot of things you can do around here, so let's go and explore Zermatt together. The first thing one has to know is that Zermatt is car free, which means that you have to arrive by train. The easiest way to reach is to go either by car or bus to Tesh and then taking the train to Zermatt. So the first place would be the Rothorn, which is one of the peaks here in Zermatt that can be visited. And from there you will have a fantastic frontal view over the Matterhorn. Zermatt is a place of amazing locale points which has been attracting tourists for decades. Among the viewpoints, the one at the Rothorn is less popular than the more famous Gornergrad and the Klein Matterhorn. However, in my opinion, in order to get the best view over the Matterhorn, one has to make his way up to the Rotom. There are three rides to take, the underground train up to Sunecka, followed by a beautiful cabin ride up to the Blauherd. I'd say the view from over there is already pretty good. In general, access to the Blauherd station is given on a daily base. For some of you, this might be already good enough. There are also terrace restaurants to go for lunch, which make this place quite accommodating to pedestrians. By taking the third ride, you eventually will arrive on top of the Roton, from where you'll be able to enjoy a fantastic alpine panorama. Now up here on the Rotom and we have such a fantastic view over the Matterhorn. Wow, it's really brilliant with this blue sky. Let's go a little bit closer to the cliff. You'll see it's actually quite steep. Yeah, it looks quite dangerous, but the view here, I'll say it again, it's just brilliant. Matterhorn, perfect weather. Well, definitely I can highly recommend a visit to the Rotom. So a return ticket costs you 60 Swiss francs, but if you use a half tax ticket, then you can get it for only 30 Swiss francs, which is much cheaper. There is also quite a good restaurant up there, which will make your day even more enjoyable. Surely it's a great idea to go for a hot chocolate or glue wine. As you can see, there are definitely many reasons to speak for coming up to the Rotom. And then of course you have to walk around the village, it's very pretty. And from here you have a brilliant view over the Matterhorn. Wow! This is the iconic peak that is one of the landmarks of Switzerland. Zermatt is one of the most beautiful villages of Switzerland. 
It's a typical Alpine Swiss holiday town full of traditional houses, chalets and hotels. When roaming around the village you will see the old and the new blending together quite nicely. My favorite parts are the river promenade as well as the old town where you'll be able to get to see numerous Stadel houses. These are very typical for the canton of Wallis. Great is also this lane, it's quite touristy and it shows how commercialized Zermatt has become. Yet I find it really enjoyable to walk around here, going for coffees, meals or shopping. Quite worth is also a visit to the church, since it has really a beautiful interior. Zermatt during sunny winter days is just very nice to experience. Looking at the various houses and hotels with their roofs covered with loads of snow, one can feel the winter wonderland vibes present in here. There are many good reasons to visit Zermatt only on a day trip, especially if one just wants to experience the panorama over the summits and the view to the Matterhorn. However, after having visited Zermatt for five times in total, I felt it was most enjoyable when having stayed overnight. Once the sun disappears during the late afternoon behind a Matterhorn and the darkness sets in, Zermatt is starting to glow. There are these 15 minutes after sunset where you can see the contrast between the snow glowing in cool colors and the many lights suspend some warmth. To me, this is the moment when the winter wonderland feeling is coming up the most. Thus, it's definitely a great choice to plan your dinner around one hour after sunset in order to have enough time experiencing this town during dusk. If you come to Zermatt, then definitely you should take this train that will take you up to the Gornergrat. So the Gornergrat is a cliff from where you'll have a fantastic view over the glaciers and the surrounding mountains. The train ride up to the Gornergrat is Zermatt's most famous attraction. And this for a good reason. The way up is really scenic, there are a couple of stops that might be worth going out. For example, Riffelalp is good for sledding, while Rotenboden is the place to get out in order to hike down to the Riffelsee. Normally, the reflection of the Matterhorn can be seen over there, However, during winter the lake is mostly frozen. Nevertheless, it's quite fun, especially when the ice is thick enough you can go for sliding. My friend Johannes and I had really a great time up there. There are also various hiking trails that one can take. For example, this one leading you to the lookout to the Gorman Glacier is really worth it. And now, let's proceed to the most popular attraction of Zermatt, to the Gornergrat. I'm now up here on the lookout on the Gornergrat. Right here we have the Star Observatory and in the background the majestic Matterhorn. Yeah, this is really one of the best lookout points you can get here in Zermatt. The Gornergrat is basically a long ridge that happens to be perfectly located. From there you can oversee a fantastic panorama over some very interesting peaks and glaciers. It's definitely perfect to come up here, especially during sunny weather. However, during cloudy days with poor visibility, then you may want to consider going up to the Kleinmatterhorn. This attraction is what I call the top of Switzerland. The Kleinmatterhorn, or also called Matterhorn Glacier Paradise, is the place where your chance of getting a clear sky view might be the highest. In order to reach, you need to walk to the upper part of the village, and then you have to take two cable lift rides up to the Trockener Steg. On sunny days, you will get a fantastic view over the Matterhorn, which is now much closer to you. This, however, shall be not enough to you. When being up there, you have to take the teleferric up to the Kleinmatterhorn, 
Europe's highest altitude station. Being on 3883 meters, you will have a great view over Zermatt, the Gormagrad, the Roton, the Matterhorn, which feels like it was an eye level, and then you can also look down to Breu Cervinia in Italy. Standing on a platform, those 2000er mountains suddenly feel quite small, especially when the weather isn't the best, likely up there you'll be standing above the clouds, above heaven. Costing you 90 Swiss francs to come up here, one may ask whether it's worth to go after having been to the Gormagrad and the Rotom. My answer to that is definitely going to be yes. The Matterhorn Glacier Paradise is not only about the lookout, but also about the Ice Palace. This is a very unique attraction that you else only can experience up on the Jungfrau Joch, in here you can see various statues carved out of the ice, some typical motifs as the fighting Ehringer cows, a dragon, the stars of the canton of Wallis, and then there is also Buddha and a statue of Holy Virgin Mary. All in all, it's a great attraction with a dramatic view, a wonderful ice palace, and for many of you, it's also the first time experiencing thin air. As you can see, there are some really great things that you can do in Zermatt during autumn and especially during winter. There are a lot more great things to experience up there. Of course, skiing is one of the best things that you can do in Zermatt, yet I have to try it out for myself. It's important to mention that Zermatt is not only great during cold season, it's also very exciting to come up here during spring and summer. For sure I will come up again during summer, I really want to try out the Five Lakes hike to see the reflections of the Matterhorn in the water. Something that I think is going to be very exciting. So that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Till the next episode, please take good care and we're going to see each other very soon.